Florida, the nation's gizzard. It's the magnificent Lassiter Show, starring the magnificent Lassiter, featuring the nimble fingers of Michael Stereo at the control board, the second most respected newsman, Don Richards, and the world's most dangerous traffic reporter, Gary McHenry. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Lassiter. Eight minutes after the hour of three o'clock. Well, hi there, fun seekers. Welcome into another Friday, May the 26th. 1989. As you will notice, there there is there is no conga this afternoon. Uh, there there is no <clears throat> no Lord's pledge. Maybe, maybe in the second hour because because I want to I want to do something a little bit differently than I've been doing on Fridays. I want to talk to you seriously. I I was out having dinner last night, and towards the end of the evening, somebody came up and, and asked me a question. And the question is something that unless I really miss. I, I, I may be missing here, but unless I really miss the point, it's something that is kind of bubbling under the surface. And the, and the person came up to me and he said, this, this, this stuff that's going on in China, this stuff that's, that's going on in the Soviet Union and, and this Gorbachev thing, and why? Why, why? why do people look at Gorbachev as more of a, a hero for democracy than, than they do you know, to, to us, to George Bush? Damn good question. I mean, all over the world, men and women are demonstrating for dem democracy. They're, they're magic. Magic words, aren't they? Demonstrating for democracy. They're risking all that they have. Maybe it's not much, but it's all that they have. They're standing up to autocratic governments. They're, they're standing up to the armies. They're standing up with courage, and they're standing up with dignity. And they have a champion. A man who, who excites them. A man who inspires them, a man that they believe in. And his name is Mikhail Gorbachev. How can that be? How is that possible? In China, they're carrying statues of Lady Liberty. They're quoting Jefferson and Lincoln, but they're looking to Gorbachev as a champion for democracy? Not to George Bush. Again, how can that possibly be? In Poland, organized labor has grown stronger and stronger and stronger, but not because of anything that America has done, but because of pressure from the Soviet Union. How can that be? All throughout Europe, people are excited at the prospects of reduced tensions as well as the real reductions in arms and troops. But the credit goes to Gorbachev, not to the leaders in the so-called Western world. How can that possibly be? There's something wrong. Polls in Europe indicate that the man on the street trusts Gorbachev at least as much and frequently more than the President of the United States of America? How can that possibly be? There must be something wrong. It is argued that few, if any, any immigrants ever show up on the, the doorsteps of the Soviets, and that's true. Or show up on the doorsteps uh, in China or in Poland, and that's all true. And every day, countless thousands upon thousands of people show up on our doorstep. But is it freedom and democracy that they hunger, or is it economic gain? Often the refugees are the least tolerant people when it comes to democratic rule. And if you don't believe that, then go down to Miami and listen to the thoughts and the views of the Cubans. It's not democracy that they crave. It's a heavy-handed rule that tolerates absolutely no freedom of expression that does not agree with their own. The people who frequently have no understanding whatsoever of democracy. They do understand capitalism. Western style economic system. They're not demanding free enterprise and private ownership. They're not looking for labor versus management. They want organized labor to have more input in the current system. They have utterly no desire whatsoever to set up a nation where a handful of poles own and control the nation's wealth. That's not what they're looking for. In Russia, the people do not clamor for a, a Western-style democratic system, but they clamor for a democratic communist party. And the story is the same in China. The Chinese people love their country. They love their traditions, their culture, their uniqueness. They want greater input in determining their own destiny. There is not the slightest suggestion 
that they want to do away with a basic form of government or the current basic political and economic system. There's not the slightest suggestion of that whatsoever. They demonstrate for a loosening of current restraints, not for radical change. When they talk about democracy, it's not necessarily the democracy that you think they're talking about. They're talking about, again, a more democratic process within the communist system. It's very difficult for a lot of Americans to understand that most of the people who live in Russia are very happy. Most of the people who live in China are very happy. There is no indication that the people in China are looking for a return to private exploitation of the nation's wealth, nor speculation in the nation's commodities, nor big banks speculating with the nation's currency, nor big insurance companies hoarding the nation's wealth. There's no indication at all that that's what they have in mind. There's no indication at all that that's what they're referring to when they say, we want more freedom, we want more democracy. There's no indication that they want to establish a two-tiered system of haves and have-nots, nor any indication that they want a system that, that exploits labor to the advantage of management, nor any indication that they want a nation of landlords and tenants, nor any indication whatsoever that they want a nation where some people earn a living not from producing but from running out their money. No indication at all. They quote Jefferson, who spoke of free speech and thought. But he didn't speak of private ownership of the media. They quote Lincoln, who spoke of emancipation, not of slave wages. They don't quote Donald Trump, who gloats over the fact that he just ripped off Merv Griffin. They do not quote Ronald Reagan, who fired 12,000 air traffic controllers because they complained that they were dangerously overworked. And they don't quote George Bush, who advocates freedom-loving former owners of Coca-Cola bottling franchises and franchises in Nicaragua go out and form armies and kill the commies. They don't quote any of those Americans. See, Mikhail Gorbachev visited China not terribly long ago. When he was there, he announced an easing of tensions and a significant reduction of troops along their common border. George Bush stopped into China not all that long ago either. He was uh, there to push another Kentucky Fried Chicken franchise. Mikhail Gorbachev uses his prestige to advocate a greater openness in Communist Party relations. A closer relationship between the leaders and the people. George Bush uses his prestige to advocate the sale of cigarettes. And sometimes weapons. In China, the students held up a statue of Lady Liberty. In this country, the United States of America, more often than not, people demand the words at the base of Lady Liberty be removed. Be ignored. In America, the president says that we destroy the country if we dare think about raising the wages of the common laborer 30 cents an hour. In the Soviet Union, the chairman says ways must be found to improve the standard of living of the common laborer. In the Eastern Bloc, military forces are being reduced. In the Western Bloc, allies are having their arms twisted to accept still more lethal weapons. In the East, government leaders are partaking in self-examination and self-criticism. In the West, such things are happening less and less often. Not long ago, okay, so it was a number of years ago, but nonetheless, things remain in our memories. Not long ago, students showed up at the seat of government in Washington protesting being sent off to die in a stupid war. And they were tear-gassed on the spot. In Beijing, students showed up to protest and to ask for more democracy. And a month later, they're still there. The outcome of the demonstrations in China may yet turn out to be brutal and a bloodbath. For all I know, as I speak right now, there is a bloodbath going on. The hardliners may yet prevail in China and Russia this time. But we should never lose sight that the people in these countries do not clamor for what you think of as democracy. They do not want the right to shoot each other in the street. They do not want the right to cheat each other in the marketplace. They do not want the right to shove religious views down each other's throats. And they do not want the right to tell lies about their political opponents. They don't consider that to be democracy. They want, they crave what you already have. The right to think of yourself, to think for yourself. The right to speak out, the right to participate in all levels of government. Every single level of government. They want the right to vote, to run for office, the right to have access to information and to news. They want the right to dissent. They want the right not to have to pledge an allegiance to a piece of flag. 
sports pretend to agree with policies that they disapprove of. They're the rights that they want. That's what they mean when they say democracy. They want all of the things that you take for granted and more often than not of late seem to be willing to do away with. They want leaders who will come out into the streets and take questions from ordinary citizens, not just drive by in bulletproof limousines or avoid answering when they finally are confronted. They want leaders who are responsive to the needs of ordinary people, who think in terms of housing and education and jobs and medical care, not lower taxes for stock speculators. They want what we used to be all about, not what we have become. They do not want the right to finance the purchase of a new pair of shoes at 19% a year on a credit card. They do not want the right to export jobs to a foreign country to improve and fatten the bottom line. They do not want the right to cloud political campaigns with rumor and misinformation. Democracy, that's what they want. It has nothing to do with so-called free markets nor capitalism. It is government for the people, government by the people, government of the people. That is all it is. But rather than support the people in China and Poland and even the Soviet Union, we seem to be far more concerned with why they look more and more to Gorbachev than to Bush. Maybe it's because Bush was the hand-picked candidate of the guy who liked to call the Washington press corps sons of bitches and did all he could to manipulate press coverage and did all he could to manipulate the press's access. Maybe it's because Bush headed up an agency that is renowned for interfering with the business of sovereign nations. Maybe it's because Bush was part of an administration that shot at protesting students in Ohio. Even though it was 20 years ago. I honestly don't know why they seem to view Gorbachev as more of a champion for democracy than George Bush. But I do know that it saddens me. Our nation clamors for more news and information. The other complains that it has too much. One nation clamors for a direct vote. The other shows up at the polls in increasingly smaller numbers. One nation cries out for a choice between candidates. The other seems to be saying that one party has all the answers and the other is irrelevant. One nation says that all the people should have a voice. The other seems to be saying that, well, if you don't agree with the majority, then maybe you better keep your mouth shut. One nation cries out for due process. The other would all but like to do away with it when it suits its purposes. One nation calls those who, who subvert the Constitution traitors. The other calls them heroes. One nation points to its accomplishments to boast that it is making progress. The other nation points to its adversary's shortcomings to improve on its own morale. Now, outside of all of that, I'll be damned if I can think of anything that might make Gorbachev look better than Bushy. Can you? Look on now. We're going to set the hook. This is the important part of the show. This is where we ask, ask the question for you to respond to. Very, very important here. Careful now. Why is Mikhail Gorbachev at least as popular as Bushy in Western Europe? And the clear-cut champion in, in the pro-democracy crowd in Russia and in Poland and East Germany and, and in China? How is that possible? How can that be? How can Mike the Commie be thought of as a champion of democracy? And George the Republican as an also-ran. Let me give you See if maybe you can answer the question. Pinellas, 461-9352, 461-WFLA. Bill's brother, 970 WFLA. Bill Wolf, Charlie. Oh, okay. I kid you not, that was 20 minutes. 20 minutes, he said. Well, it was longer than that because I didn't type it into the screen until after Paul Harvey. Really? You so called before Paul, Paul Harvey? 30. Unbelievable. Did, did you catch what he said? Not a word of it. I'll go back on the tape and listen later. Well, I don't really think it's worth it. I, you know, I don't really think there's any great need to. I, uh... uh hey, I'm going to be as honest with you as I know how to be. I mean, this one started out like a house o fire in the 3 to 4 o'clock hour. And in the 4 to 5 o'clock hour, it got to be pulling teeth. And in the 5 to 6 o'clock hour, it was absolutely nowheresville. I don't blame you. I truly do not blame you. I, too would be very, very embarrassed. I, too, would be very, very humiliated that throughout much of the world, this country just is not any longer looked at it as a leader in democracy. I, 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 you know, I understand. I really do. I'd be embarrassed just like you are. 
Although, the, you know, the difference between you and me is rather than pretend it wasn't the case, I think I might have tried to figure out why. I think I might have tried to find some kind of an explanation, and I think I might have tried to find some type of, of way out of the mess. That's, that's the only difference between you and I. But, you know, hey, I understand. I, I completely understand. Just being a little bit bummed out, a little bit humiliated that a guy that heads up the Soviet Union is thought of more of a, a mover and shaker in terms of the needs of, of the common guy. No matter if the common guy lives in Poland or the common guy lives in China. Who knows, maybe even someday he'll be thought of in terms of the, the guy who's most in favor of the common guy. I, you know, maybe in Mexico. Or, or Indiana. Or who knows where it might show up next. So I, I completely understand your humiliation. I don't understand your not doing anything about it. But I, you know, hey, I understand, you know, where a million people are, are clamoring for democracy. You guys are far more interested in watching a television show. By the way, don't worry. Tonight, it's my understanding that the CBS television network will replace the three and a half minutes. <clears throat> excuse me. The three and a half minutes that were lost last week to the, the demonstrations in China that, that, you know, you unfortunately were deprived of. The three and a half minutes of Dallas will be shown again tonight so that you won't have to be troubled with, you know, a billion people clamoring for democracy, clamoring for the things that you're supposed to stand up for. Hardly one of you did a damn thing about it this week, I know. Hey, don't worry about it. Hey, hey, have a great weekend! Yeah, it's a holiday weekend. Uh, I'll be back on Tuesday, and you guys don't have to trouble yourselves with, you know, worrying about any, any problems until Tuesday. Just, hey, be happy, you know?